A Woman Rises, Jeanette Rankin Takes a Stand and Paves the Way by Ariana Mulcara. Taking a stand and speaking up about what you think is right is not an easy thing to do. We're constantly hearing stories about leaders and activists like Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks who've changed the world and spoke out about their beliefs. Among these brave and intellectual people is a woman who is known in history due to her countless contributions. Who is this honorable woman, you might ask? Well, it's none other than former Congresswoman Jeanette Rankin. Jeanette Rankin was the very first woman elected to Congress. She helped pass the 19th Amendment and peacefully protested against war. This fearless woman, who was a committed pacifist and believer in man and woman equality, did more than most people do in a lifetime. Miss Rankin, born on June 11, 1880, near Missoula, Montana, was one of six children. Wellington, one of her brothers, was very helpful during Rankin's campaign for a House seat in Congress. But, before making history as the first female in Congress, she tried to pursue social work, because she saw how the underprivileged lived while visiting her brother in Boston. She decided to take a step forward and dedicate her life to helping others, and for a period of time she worked in a children's home. But this type of work began to lose her interest, which is when she became interested in women's suffrage. This is when she found her true calling. The story of women in Congress begins with Jeanette Rankin, who uh, is elected to the House in 1916 from Montana. Uh, she's elected to the House four years before women had the right to vote nationally. And in a way, she's really a bridge from uh, the suffrage movement, uh, to uh, women uh, attaining full political rights. Uh, she was active in uh, a, a national women's suffrage organization. Uh, she helped women get the right to vote, not only in Montana, but a couple of states west of the Mississippi. And uh, she uh, runs uh, in 1916. She's elected to one of Montana's two at-large districts. And part of her platform is that she's a pacifist. So, as she earned her seat in Congress, she became more active in winning women the right to vote. She once said, How shall we answer the challenge, gentlemen? Rankin asked. How shall we explain to them the meaning of democracy if the same Congress that voted to make the world safe for democracy refuses to give this small measure of democracy to the woman of our country? Rankin felt pretty strong about her tireless efforts towards equal rights for men and women. She created women's rights legislation and with her help the 19th amendment granting women the right to vote was passed. Rankin worked so unimaginably hard and she achieved her goal. She opened doors and opportunities for the many women who followed her. The following is a Montana PBS learning media offering. She tried social work for a while, and while that was good work for her, it wasn't what she was after. And she finally settled when she was in Washington State on the suffrage movement. Her and the suffrage leaders at the time, they were from the upper middle class. That gave them the freedom to take on causes and to work for them. The suffrage movement gave her a tremendous opportunity to develop her um, abilities, interacting with people speaking, um, convincing them of, a, of her argument. And then came back to Montana in 1911 to what evolves pretty quickly into heading up the Montana suffrage movement to get the vote for women. Getting women the right to vote wasn't the only giant step forward she took. I don't know about you, but having all eyes on you as you make a vote on whether or not the U.S. should become involved in a world war, especially as the sole congresswoman, seems, well, pretty tough. Now, I'm not saying that Rankin didn't have butterflies in her stomach while giving the vote, but it sure took a lot of audacity. After the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the Congress was to vote on the declaration of war on Japan. Rankin was the one and only congressperson to vote against this war. In fact, she was the only member of Congress to vote against U.S. involvement in both world wars. She once said, 
You can no more win a war than you can win an earthquake. There was a lady from Montana, Jeanette Rankin, and she voted against war. She was strict pacifist. She voted against uh, World War I uh, because uh, she felt that way, and then she didn't run at that time. One term, and then all those years, up until World War II was declared, she was elected again for one term, and she voted against it. And I remember this vividly because she was down in the front row of the chamber, which is right in front of me, and uh, she was crying like a baby. And uh, uh, Everett Dirksen, who she admired, and who's a dear friend of mine too, uh, came down, put his arm around her, and tried to get her, because he told me that he tried to get her to vote present, but she would not vote present. She voted against the war. Now that I have read about how Jeanette Rinkin took a stand in history, she has honestly become one of my very own role models. She stood up for women's rights, protested against violence and the world wars, strived for peace, became the first woman in Congress, took part in women's suffrage, and the list goes on. You may not have realized that this very individual has shaped the world into what it is today. Look at where we were as a country 100 years ago, and look where we're at now. I mean, there's still numerous problems in the world. Like Rankin said, I worked for suffrage for years and got it. I've worked for peace for 55 years and haven't come close. But really, take a look at where we're at today. Another woman has made history. We recently had the very first woman candidate in the presidential election, a possible president of the United States of America. You see, big things start small. We started it out celebrating the first woman in Congress, and now we could have been celebrating the first woman president. It just amazes me to see how far we've come. Jeanette Rankin sure did a lot in her time. She was the beginning of a long line of women who would have powerful positions in America. I hope that I'll be like her when I grow up, and I hope that I'll also rise and pave the way. <laughs>